Now we've had a lot of great matchups this year for boxing. Francisco <clears throat> Joshua, <laughs> Triple G Canelo. When we got thrown a curveball, Mayweather versus McGregor. I want to get your thoughts, Jim. What do you think about this fight? Riggs King. Uh, I think that that's the one previous American event that I would compare to uh, Mayweather versus McGregor. And uh, you know, I've always I've always known that this is a competitive absurdity. Uh, if if Floyd Mayweather were going to go into a cage and allow himself to be kicked by Conor McGregor, then I don't think Floyd Mayweather would have a chance to win that fight. But that's not what's happening. Conor McGregor is going to go into a ring and box against Floyd Mayweather with no basic boxing background or portfolio to bring to this enterprise. And I've learned within the last day or two something I didn't know, which is that McGregor's style is exactly the wrong style for fighting Floyd Mayweather. He's not an attacker. He's a counterpuncher. He's a relatively slow-paced counterpuncher. His game is to stand back, make you come to him, and try to knock you out with one big shot. Well, guess what? Floyd Mayweather's not going to come to him. <laughs> He's not going to play into any counterpuncher's hands. The one style that nobody's ever laid a glove on Floyd from is that of the natural counterpuncher. The only two guys who ever gave Floyd Mayweather significant trouble over a period of time were Jose Luis Castillo in both of their two fights and Marcos Maidana. Both of them face first aggressive brawlers who forced Floyd backward into the ropes and threw 75 or 80 punches around trying to land something. Conor McGregor throws about 40 punches per round and he stands back as a counterpuncher hoping the guy will come to him. That's the worst style in the world for fighting Floyd Mayweather. So it's even worse as a competitive event than I thought it was before it was made. Does this help boxing or hurt boxing in your opinion? Well, over the long haul, it won't hurt us and, and won't help us either. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think you know it'll be good for boxing only in the sense that I'm 100% certain that the boxer is going to win, and he should because it's a boxing match. Uh, so, you know, I think it's something that is unique, one of a kind, it comes and goes, and everybody goes back to their business. Is it a little bittersweet that it's, the fight's going to take place a few weeks before Canelo de Luckin? And well, I, you know, it bothers me, yeah, because it's, it's clearly aimed at blunting Canelo and uh, Golovkin. It's, it's, the only reason in the world to choose August 26 is to cut into the buy rate for September 16. And oh, by the way, they didn't do Kovalev and Ward any favors uh, as they get ready for this weekend either. So there's competition between networks. There's competition across various political dividing lines. People wanted to take a bite out of Canelo versus Golovkin, and probably they did by staging the fight on August 26th. If you look at history, that's not a pay-per-view date. Nobody chooses late August before Labor Day as the proper time to try to sell pay-per-views. They're only doing it for one reason. As well as the same day as Cotto versus Kamagai. And last yes, week, and that's another thing that hurt Cotto versus Kamagai if Cotto versus Kamagai is going to stay on August 26th. And last week, 